So I just saw this video, but I actually forgot to press record. It's called Social Media is Killing Romance. And spoiler alert, I agree with a lot that said in this video but i also have a lot of things i'd like to share too later on but is romance start. dead in the modern world why am i asking not completely well the other day i was talking with my mom over lunch and i asked her about how she and my dad met let me tell you the story's straight out of a k-drama low-key when i heard the story it made hear. me wonder where the romance has gone in the modern world it seems like the most common occurrence in this day and age is hookups toxic relationships cheating and overall just guys and girls going straight for each other's jugulars because they see the other party as the most heinous and vile human beings whose sole purpose is to ruin lives and there's a truth to what's being said because i mean just look at the state of dating relationships today you could probably even ask your parents for advice on how to get a partner and when they give you their advice you'll probably think that that wouldn't work today or that people would be weirded out if you tried it and it makes me wonder how it came to this point what was originally seen as a romantic gesture that would move hearts has now become cringe or doing too much like y'all you probably wouldn't be alive today had your dad not pulled out that move on your mom and i get it times change and culture shifts but i've gotta wonder are we moving forwards or backwards let's talk about it the type of information you consume on a regular basis heavily influences your perspective on this topic, which makes sense because your cognitive library of information and experiences shapes your worldview. Let's say you lived a simple life as a farmer in a small but closely knit community where everyone knew and looked out for each other. You spend your free time taking long walks, enjoying nature, and volunteering in community events. Your day-to-day -day experiences mainly consist of hard but fulfilling work, tranquility, and joy. With this type of lifestyle, you probably have a more positive and optimistic outlook on life. Now, on the other hand, let's say you, well, this isn't really theoretical anymore, but let's take your and most people's <laughs> lives as an example. You're probably working a stressful job that you might not particularly enjoy, but endure anyway because it gets the bills paid. Because it's so stressful and draining, you go to the internet to mentally escape and recharge. And it's on the internet where you get absolutely overloaded with all kinds of information. News, celebrity drama, content creators being exposed for <laughs> and people saying the most insulting and hateful things because it's the internet. Everyone's anonymous and therefore aren't held accountable for their actions. When this is the type of information you're constantly exposed to, would it be any surprise if you think the world is on fire and that there's no hope for humanity? The same logic can be applied yeah, to your perspective on dating. There the type of relationship so. content that is most likely to be fed to your algorithm are the ones that are negative and hostile towards the opposite sex. And this makes sense because it's engaging and gets a reaction out of you, whether it be because you share the same experience or because it's rage bait. My ex shoot on me this, my partner is toxic and manipulative that. Men ain't shit. Women get the ick when a guy breathes. I have to train my boyfriend because he doesn't know how to treat a woman right. Women like to cause problems and make things difficult for the sake of it. It just keeps going on and on and on like an ultimate ping pong match. And again, there's a truth to these things. But when you're constantly consuming this type of information, you end up getting stuck in an echo chamber where all you hear is that men are trash, women are problematic, and because others are reaffirming what everyone else is saying, you assume that must be the norm not the exception and maybe you're thinking well yeah everyone's saying it's true everyone has shared similar personal experiences before i'll let you guys read these i already read these the one on the right is the one i think is the realest these other two i think you know these people are, are in their feelings a bit too much or doesn't that mean that it is the norm not necessarily remember the type of content that is most likely to be fed to the algorithm and go viral are the ones that are the most emotionally charging and engaging and negative emotions are far more potent and impressionable than positive emotions you hear it all the time people online may get thousands of positive comments and compliments but as soon as they read one negative comment it lives in their head rent free for a longer period of time than the positive ones and it's because negativity is far more potent that's why the news consists mainly of fear-mongering and negative events, and why everyone is drawn to drama. We engage with negativity far more than we do with positivity, and that's why it's constantly being fed to us. Furthermore, people are more likely to share negativity than positivity. If you've been wronged, you're more inclined to voice out your grievance and seek retribution, right? You have something to prove, and when you're validated for it, it feels amazing. It's I actually like to hear this in the, in the comment section. Is this you? Do you agree with this? Because for me, no, I, th but this is just me, right? Let me know. Do you, and also, do you guys see this out in the world? I, I've only seen this from people that are no longer in my life. Uh, I think they're pretty vindictive. And the, they think the world revolves around them when they do this. And I personally don't engage with it or entertain it. So you let me know. Is this you? So if, it, if it is you, it, it is you. It's just, it is what it is. Till it ain't. 
especially more so when you've had a history of bad relationships and therefore hardly ever experience validation and reassurance. But on the other hand, if your life is just swell and everything is going well for you, maybe you'd want to share your experience at times, but more often than not, you're keeping it to yourself because you're just vibing and enjoying the moment. When you're happy and genuinely enjoying the moment, you aren't going, hold on, I'm going to put this on my Instagram or TikTok to show how happy I am. Some people do that shit. But yeah, when I do this, uh, I, I sit and I enjoy the moment. I really do. And then I reflect on it. And then when like when I get home and then when I reflect on it, then I create a video about it if I feel I need to. Or then I'll go live and I'll talk about it. But that's how I do it. I don't know how you guys do it. You'd be breaking yourself out of the immersion. And at that point, you aren't thinking about how happy you are. Instead, you're thinking about wanting other people to see that you appear happy. There's a subtle difference. Put more succinctly, there's more to life than what goes on in our screens. The ones that are in happy, healthy relationships aren't living their lives on the internet, which is why we rarely ever see any positivity about relationships online. And for the scarce few that do exist online, you most likely won't run into it because it's not as emotionally engaging or relatable, and therefore won't be fed to the algorithm. But overall, something to keep in mind is that happy and healthy relationships don't exist online. They exist in the real world. And remember, uh, that's half true and half false. Because the internet and, you know, the real world, they're intertwined. You know, it's not just a flat line, the real world, and a flat line, the internet. These things intertwine all the time. So you guys also got to put that in perspective as well. It's Life is not a flat line, it's a circle. This isn't to say that the things people complain about online are invalid. Far from it, actually. The reality is that there are so many people out there who have no business getting into relationships. Many of us today have a lot of baggage and issues about ourselves that we need to sort out. But instead of doing the internal work to fill that void within ourselves... Because that's very hard to do like very 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 hard to do i've got i like i've cried several times over my own issues which is normal and i think you guys should also try and go through that journey no matter how difficult it is because if you do succeed in making it you'll come out a stronger and a more wise person and hopefully you share that wisdom with your friends your family or even the world which is the reason why i still do these videos like this we seek other people to fill that void for us, and surprise surprise, it doesn't work. We're not filling that void, we're just hiding it so that we no longer are aware that it exists. And this results in us projecting exists. our insecurities and problems always. onto our partners, leading us to make stupid choices and deeply hurting them in the process. Or, on the other hand, it leaves us susceptible to ignoring red flags and falling or settling for people that don't give us the love and respect we deserve. Either way, we end up a statistic in the cycle of trauma and toxicity. We're human, so of course we have our flaws and ignorant moments. The bitter reality is that sometimes we may need to go through these experiences to grow and learn from them. It only becomes an issue when we don't hold ourselves accountable for our actions and instead wallow in our own misery. If we want things to change, we simply have to do better. And on one hand, it's great that social media is providing people with a platform to raise awareness and call people out on their bullshit because the only way to address a problem is if we're even aware of it in the first place. But I don't think people are getting that message. Instead, they take on a victim mentality and allocate all their efforts into antagonizing others as opposed to working on themselves. That is what's dangerous about the negative relationship content online. People aren't mature enough to mentally process the information in a productive and healthy manner. And because of this, that type of content polarizes people's opinions on the opposite sex and heavily influences the way they approach relationships. Imagine an impressionable and naive teenager who knows absolutely nothing about relationships. All they see online is people saying, men ain't shit, be your own boss bitch and have these men bow down to you like the queen you are. Or and there's some- Men ain't shit, be your own boss bitch and have these men bow down to you like- Even in the three things that were said here, one of these, does have a little bit of all of these have some type of wisdom in it but there's one of these that you can actually take and you can add to yourself as a woman it's up to you to figure out what that is for all the ladies that are watching this it's not up to me as a man to try and tell you what it is but i definitely would encourage you as a male to try and find somebody that does value you maybe not as a queen and maybe not bow down but does value you in a way that makes you feel like royalty. But that's my piece.
like the queen you are. Or, women are objects to be controlled and dominated. Be an alpha male and treat women as less than you because that's the only way you'll get their attention. When this is a and then there's some grain of truth in this to to a fine point, right? So let's call a spade a spade. I believe this is referring to Andrew Tate, right? So let's talk about Andrew real quick, like just real quick. We're not going to go too deep into it, right? But in life, it's not black and white. It's shades of gray. So with someone like Andrew, right, this cartoon representation of him, to be an alpha male, what is that? To be strong, to be a leader, be courageous, blase, blase, right? Whatever you assume to be alpha and manly. Now, with that alphaness, there's not necessarily anything wrong with it. But when you take yourself as being an alpha male and thinking, hey, to be alpha, I must subject the opposite gender to my will. They must be underneath me as if I am a king and they must do what I say. That's, in my opinion, wrong and incorrect and causes trauma for another human being. Just because they're a different gender does not mean they are not a human, right? That being said, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be alpha. There's nothing wrong with going to the gym. There is nothing wrong with wanting to be strong. There is nothing wrong to look up to somebody that has the muscles, has the money, has the, the cars and the girls, right? There's nothing wrong wanting to look up to that. But there's definitely something wrong with wanting to be exactly like somebody else. I believe all of us have the ability to be alpha, whether it's alpha male or alpha woman. We all have the ability to become alpha. But if your idea of becoming alpha is being the same as somebody else, you're wrong. You're 100% wrong because that's not what alpha is. Alpha is being at the top, right? That means you would have to be better than that person. That doesn't mean you have to have more girls than that person. That doesn't mean you have to have more money than that person. But being alpha, you would have to be better than that person. Now, what makes you think you are better than somebody else? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it clothing? Is it jewelry? Or is it self-respect, right? In my opinion, it's self-respect. If you can have more respect for yourself and hold yourself accountable, to the point where other people would not hold themselves accountable to, in my eyes, that's pretty alpha, right? To others, that's not alpha. Being alpha is being able to make a guy go to sleep in three seconds in a chokehold, right? It's all pers it's all perspective. It's also up to you to pick and choose who do you want to look up to as a man. We all have our own mentors, but it's up to you to try and find the right one. Be an alpha male and treat women as less than you because that's the only way you'll get their attention. When this is a type of content being imprinted into their minds, do you think they'll be in the right headspace to have a healthy relationship? No. If anything, they're more likely to feed into the cycle of toxicity. People don't know how to act or think for themselves anymore. And if people aren't getting guidance in the real world, they end up seeking it in the online world. And unfortunately, a majority of the content online is not conducive to building healthy, well-rounded people. Yeah, because a lot of it is trying to just make as much money as possible and feed. Maybe they feed their ego and, hey, look how many people I got listening to me. Right. So remember, whenever you're trying to look up to somebody. What is the reason that they will want you to look up to them? Try and think about that. It's it's going to be hard. Like it's basically trying to think of, you know, you're down here. They're up here. They want to bring you up here, as they say. But why is that? And what is the true reason? It, it takes some very deep thinking to try and grasp that. But I think you could do it if you try. Dating is in a really tricky spot right now. There's so many factors and complexities that play a role into why it's become the talk successful it is today. And the content online is only exacerbating the problem. There's so much more I want to talk about regarding this topic. But for it's now, the main takeaway is this. Go outside and touch grass. Nah, no, I'm just that playing. Really Partially. But seriously. That's how you get introspection. Disconnecting from the internet, the online, the entertainment. Because entertainment in itself is a distraction from life. That is the point of entertainment. That's why the people that entertain you the most get paid the most. That's why sports players get paid so much. Besides putting their bodies on the line, it's entertainment. It lets you... Take a break from your own self to think about something else.
But if you are willing and purpose, purposefully willing, not forcefully willing, right? So for, forcefully willing, what does that mean? So say you have a house, you have everything you want, um, but now you're late on rent and now you're getting evicted and now you're stuck outside. You're stuck outside. You didn't purposely go outside. Now you're stuck outside. You will get some introspection, but it definitely isn't willing, which would make it easier to come to grasp with who you are as a person versus pausing everything and say, hey, I'm going to go outside on my own free will. I'm going to sit in the grass or I'm going to go for a walk and I'm just going to think. Two different things that can lead to similar results, but 100% one result is better than the other. Try not to be as chronically online as much. It's messing with your mental and skewing your perspective of the world. Instead, work on building more emotional and mental awareness so that you can discover what internal work needs to be done. And lastly, take what you see online with a grain of salt. Well, actually a whole gallon, because the online 100%. world isn't our reality. People project what they want on the online world. Remember that. People, like, they, oh, I'm happy. Boop, boop, boop. They had to go through a lot of stuff to probably get that photo. And they probably didn't really enjoy whatever it was they were taking the photo of. But it was a good photo. And we'll never be happy if we try to make it out to be. Alright, that's it for now. Take care, guys. See you next time. Yeah, this is a, like I said, this was a great video. Another um, thing I wanted to touch on that I touched on when I thought I recorded this video uh, was settling, right? So people say never settle for less, which was uh, back here in the alpha male and female thing, right? Uh, never, people say never settle for less. But women what is are less. Less is subjective, right? What you think is less might be more for somebody else. That being said, you should try and figure out what is it that makes you feel like settling with this person is the right thing to do so this is for everybody young that don't know how to really find a relationship partner or somebody that might be older and they're struggling to find a relationship partner especially when you get older it becomes immensely harder to try and find a partner because with our age comes more baggage more baggage is harder for people to really handle right so that's part of being in a relationship this this man uh he's great he goes to the gym uh, he ha he's good with his money, um, but he's also very shy. He doesn't like to talk to people. And then you have this one girl. She's outgoing. She likes to talk to people. She likes making new friends, but she is unfit. She doesn't go to the gym. So she's physically unattractive, right? These two people meeting can make each other's life better because he goes to the gym and works out. That might inspire her to work out. Now they're both working out together. She's getting healthy. He's getting healthy. But he's still shy. She's not. She likes to talk to people. She is willing to make friends, maybe even in the gym. So she's in the gym. She's like, oh, hey, me and my boyfriend, if you two are dating, blase, 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 boom. Now the shy guy just made a new friend, a new gym bro. And she all she just likes making friends, right? But she's in the gym more. She's working out more. These two people add to each other's life in a way that makes it better versus this guy's a 10, this girl's a 10. He can have any girl he wants. He has a lot of money, but in having all this money, he becomes very arrogant. Same with her. She can have any man she wants. But she only wants a man that makes more money than her. So even though she's a 10, she's a 10 in looks. She's a 10 in elegance. She's a 10 in money. She even has her own money. But this guy has more money, right? And he's a 10 already. Other girls want him. But he wants her because she's at the top of the female hierarchy, right? These two people coming together, what do they really add to each other? Because they both already had money. They both already were attractive enough. They were at the top. What do they really add to each other? Now, they could become a power couple, or they could crash and burn like majority of celebrity relationships do. Because you don't really have anything to go off of because he's already arrogant. Even though you're a very beautiful woman, you being a beautiful woman, you've had men cater to you and say, hey, 
I'm a queen. I'm a bad bitch. I'm at the top. But this guy doesn't see you as that. He just sees you as a good time. Right? So even if your relationship lasted like a month, two months, three months, whatever, you know, if you guys don't really add to each other, then eventually it will plateau because before it plateaus, it will stagnate. What is the reason I'm with this person? I don't need them for anything. They just are attractive or they're just at the top. So you definitely got to, you definitely don't have to settle for less, right? So if you're a one, good luck, buddy. Good luck trying to get a two, a three, or a four, right? That being said, you being a one, does that mean you have to also settle for a one? Not necessarily. So that's when you become introspective. What about me that people don't like? Or what about me even I don't like? Say I'm overweight. Okay, you start going to the gym or you start fasting or you just start walking. You lose weight. Now you're not a one anymore. Now you're a two. Maybe you could work your way up to a five. That being said, does that mean you're automatically inclined to get a five because now you are a five? Not necessarily. Even though you want a five, she's a five, but she wants a, a eight or a nine. You're a five. That's not going to happen. So maybe you can get a three. But then are you settling for less? You say you want a five because you're a five. She's a three. What do you do? You elevate her. But you find a three that can also elevate you. So say, again, you're overweight, but you lost some more weight. You're still shy. Again, this is a woman that likes to talk to people and hang out. Or maybe even she doesn't like that. Maybe she just likes spending time with you. And her spending time with you boosts your self-esteem because you don't have to worry about trying to look good for everybody else. Now you can just look good for yourself because she already enjoys your, your pudginess. You know, she thinks you're cute when you're when you're a little chunky. Right. So even though you have a woman at home, you still work out and she might even see that and say, wow, I enjoy that you're working out. Maybe I should start cooking something to help you with your weight loss or whatever. So now you have a woman at home that's cooking. That starts to elevate her because her cooking is going to get better, right? She's always cooking for you. So now she's no longer a three. She worked herself up to a four. Maybe she works her way up to a five. But her helping you in return helped her. Now she's a five, but now you might be around the six or seven mark, right? And by the way, the higher you get, the harder it gets to it. So don't be upset if you go from a five to a six. That's a pretty big jump compared going from a two to a three. So that being said, that's, in my opinion, the best way to try and find a relationship partner. Of course, people go off of looks. That's just, that's just natural, right? But try not to just find a relationship. Find a friendship first. Hey, how are you? How's your day? Try and learn more about somebody. You might see them every day at the same, well, shit, y'all might just work together, right? Work friends, you become work friends. Maybe you start talking outside of work, and then maybe it leads into something. Now, I personally don't agree with dating your coworkers, but people do it. That's just life, right? But that being said, what if you just stayed friends, and maybe you talk to her about your personal issues, and then she introduces you to one of her friends, right? The door of friendship can lead to more opportunities than just looking for the door of romance. Because the door of romance, it just opens up to a room. The door to friendship opens up into a new world. But that's what I think. Let me guys know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.